Well, Af Africa's agricultural sector is set for exponential growth in the coming decade. This is according to a research commissioned by Microsoft and compiled by Africa Practice Reveals. The report states that with a projected value of trillions by 2030, the continent is poised to become the global center of agri-tech solutions and has also been rap seen rapid growth in e-agriculture solutions. Let's have this conversation with co-founder and CEO Huchi Capital in Kampala, Uganda, Terence Chambati. Thank you very much, Mr. Chambati, for joining us on the program. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jimmy. How are you? Very well, thank you. Well, with agriculture sustaining 70% of Africa's livelihoods, Microsoft believes that agriculture is a key sector in Africa where is Africa when it comes to agri-technology? So I think as Africans, we've got the biggest competitive advantage. I think um, the president of the African Development Bank uh, once said the future millionaires and billionaires of Africa will not only be coming from the oil and gas sector, but will be coming from the agricultural sector. And we've got the greatest uh, mass of uh, land and um, arable land for that matter. And we now need to really take agriculture as a business and not just as a form of subsistence. So this is where we've got a competitive advantage as Africa to not just feed Africans, but to feed the whole world and become the global uh, breadbasket for the whole world. Now, between uh, 2016 and 2019, the agri-tech sector grew by 44% year on year, and the continent has registered the highest number of agri-tech services in the developing world, uh, reaching over 33 million uh, smallholder farmers to date, with Africa becoming a global leader in the agri-tech space. But what are the key challenges you see here? So, Jimmy, I think, I think we, re we really need to just go back and see that we need to move into the fourth industrial revolution. And within that, we really need to embrace um, exponential technologies. I think when you started off the conversation, you did mention that we, uh, the agricultural sector is set to grow exponentially. And there are some uh, technologies which have aided uh, the agricultural sector. You're looking at things like artificial in uh, intelligence, uh, biotechnology, nanotechnology, solar energy, as basic as it may be, has also had a great impact on 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 um, on the agricultural sector. Um, the use of pumps, um, drones uh, coming into play as well. So embracing these um, exponential technologies is currently aiding the agricultural sector across the continent, whereby where you had to go and physically check on your plantation or something, you can now use a drone and get use GIS services. You can actually get a footprint, a digital footprint of what is happening within your, your, your plants. Um, bringing in robotic self-driving cars, we need to actually now just bring in these uh, technologies and embrace them for the benefit of the agricultural sector across the continent. So how can African governments leverage the opportunity presented by agri-tech solutions to address some of the continent's uh, most pressing challenges of food security, income inequality, and livelihood, you know, for its fast-growing and youthful population. Sure, I think as 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 uh, African governments, we really just need to look at the basics. The number one, the SDGs. What is the what is the start of it? You know, zero hunger, zero poverty. How is that? How can that be addressed? We are looking at agriculture and agriculture forming the base of it. Let us look at how can we use um, data, how can we use technology to help us um, answer the problem of, uh, of hunger and poverty across the continent. So you're looking at issues like leveraged assets, where you had um, a, a, a tractor service in one particular area. Why not use the same tractor to be hired across two different districts or two different provinces? Um, and um, or even more than that, why don't we, there's an abundance. Before we used to manage for scarcity, but now I think we've got an abundance of labor and abundance of technology at which we can make use of to actually address the issue of agriculture and bringing in technology into that. The governments now now need to make sure that they make data accessible to, to, every, to, to every general farmer. When they've got power of information, they can actually look at where the patterns coming in, uh, feature phones, smartphones become a necessity where people can actually look at uh, the weather conditions, um, how can we embrace uh, technology, how can we bring data, because if anything, if you can't measure anything, you will not be able to improve it. So the more we embrace data technology into the agricultural space, 
um, for the governments as well, because it contributes a lot towards the GDPs of our African governments. Most of our African governments are actually powered by, by agriculture. And uh, when we now look at the GDP, how can we improve that? Let us start um, utilizing uh, data in recording. Uh, I'll give an example of the beekeeping industry. Many countries do not know how many uh, how many beehives they've got within their countries, but our global north they've been able to actually make sure that they know the number of beehives they've got, how many bee colonies they are dealing with. How does that affect the global um, agricultural technology? Is pollination services, if we are able to know how many beers we've got across the different African countries, we will be able to know that this is the impact of natural pollination coming through from bees. So it's really important to address the issue of data. Mm. Yeah. Now, as, as a player in this um, sector, we've just um, got into uh, the second half of the year. What's your outlook for this sector? So I didn't get you, I didn't get you there. We have just entered the second half of the year. What is your outlook for the sector? Thanks for repeating that. So, so Chimu, we've just, uh, for example, here in Uganda, we've just gone into another lockdown period uh, due to coronavirus. And uh, this is the time for us to be embracing digital technologies. And uh, having going, going into the second half, um, the, the, the coronavirus waves will be coming in, different strains will continue coming in. How can we manage re remotely? How can we remain effective um, in remotely? How can you ensure, ensure that we are there without, without having to be physically there? So this takes us back to the whole issue of technology. How do we embrace technology so that we can remotely monitor and support our, our physical efforts towards um, Towards, towards managing our agricultural businesses. The last mile is very important. I think that's one, 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 one last leg which has to be addressed. Payment systems have been, have been improved, online payment systems, uh, but the last mile of saying, how do we improve the, the, the difference between the farm gate and what the consumer is actually paying? This has got to do with the last mile. I think this is an, an area which still needs to be addressed from an Arctic uh, point of view, and we'll be able to actually add value to that whole value chain from the farmer up to the, to, to the table. Teres Chambati, we do appreciate your time with us on the program. Thank you very much, have a good day.